Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat for you today. Let's give a warm hondo to General Trius from the band Future Folk, joining us live from the surface of the planet Hondo. Slight correction, I'm actually, right now I'm in Brooklyn. I mean, that's funny because there's a Brooklyn on Earth as well. Yeah, well, yeah, well no. <laughs> that, is, that is very strange. Um, where are you? Because I, could, I see you're wearing a Hondonian regulation uh, helmet. Are you in a zero-G situation? I'm on the bridge of the USS Subscribe, the Starship Subscribe. And when I have a guest from outer space, to make them feel more at home, I'll join them from the deck of my Starship. So maybe you can clear something up for me that I've wondered for a long time since you clearly know a lot about these things. Okay. What is the difference between a bridge and a brig? The brig is where you lock somebody up. It's a little jail. Oh, so it's like the opposite of the bridge. It's like where you don't want to be. The bridge is where the captain tells everyone what to do, i.e. me. And you, General. I'm sure you have a bridge on your ship. I, uh, this actually, now that I'm, now that I'm putting all the pieces together, in retrospect, this actually, um, Explains a few. Throw them in the brig! Yeah, I thought it was like, you know, co I was like, where'd my co pilot go? Exactly. Let's get into the jokes here. If I, if, now, if I make you laugh three times, General. You've already made me laugh three times. Well, in the joke segment. But yes, you're going to play a brand new Future Folk song, is that right? That's right, yep. I'm going to do a little uh, rusty adaptation of a song in progress. Wow. And you're going to tell me about the movie on Netflix. So let me just fix my helmet and let's do the dad jokes. Okay. Let's see here. Joke number one. Hold it. All right, General. Keep it together. Did you hear about the Star Wars bounty hunter that was on a reality TV show? I'm not into reality TV, but I am into bounty hunters. Uh, but I don't know the answer to that. What, what is it? It was called Undercover Bosk. Undercover Bosk. <laughs> you know Bosk, the bounty hunter? It's like Undercover Boss, but instead it's Bosk. I, 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 don't, <laughs> no, I don't know him, but like, yeah, yeah, I don't know how he has like his phone number in my, but it, I've met him at like parties. Yeah, he has those lizard arms. Lizard arms. Yeah, yeah, that guy came from the party. And these helmets are a pain. I don't know how you guys play gigs you with these. You don't know the half of it, no. Is you it don't even have the suits on. Suits are very hot. Man, under the lights and all the adoring fans hanging the, on you? Uh, the problem was we shouldn't have um, sourced our costume designer from the same person who made the bags that keep your pizza hot while the pizza delivery people bring them. <laughs> like, oh, I made you laugh. So how, so does that, do, now do I get it? What happens there? No, that doesn't count oh, for anything, kind of man. Something. Joke number two. Yeah, I know another star of science fiction who fell on hard times, and he actually had to start stripping, General. That's... His name was Flashdance Gordon. <laughs> That's a laugh! Boom! Flashdance Gordon got him. Just an inch over the line. <laughs> All right. Beautifully terrible joke. Thank you. Joke number three. Here's another little known fact about science fiction, General. Mm. Do you know how the Terminator got so muscular? No. <laughs> he used droids. He used dro droids. Dro <laughs> That's number two. That's pretty good, right? I was proud that of that one. one. That one is, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that one, but it made me laugh. He used droids. Yeah, yeah. Right. At first, I was like, it took me a second. He really did use droids. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you thought those ones were bad, I get did. ready for joke number four. Okay. <laughs> One of my other space alien friends, General, is a landscape artist. He's very unusual looking. He's a big boneless mask with a curly afro. <laughs> Blah, bros. <laughs> I, you, I, that I thought that was the punchline because you waited so long to land it that you got me twice there. You got me once on the setup and then once on the... I'm not doing very well. Go oh, good. Well, I'll just count that as one laugh per joke. That's Hold on, I'm going to lose the... Cool yeah. I'm um, going to lose the helmet for a second. I'll bring can, it can back you, for can the... You, can you see? You can't see? 
I can't see, and it's weird, but I'm going to bring it back for the musical segment. Why? Do you think I should keep it on? No, no, no. I, do, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I just wanted somebody to... Now I feel weird honest. about it. Joke number five. You know, my son, Baby Ball, started studying astronomy, General, and he got a real superior attitude. I said, what's up, man? Why are you acting so entitled? Here comes. He told me he'd learned that everything revolves around the sun. <laughs> At least in his galaxy. That's yeah, pretty funny. <sighs> but I also do little graphics, so I'm going to do a little picture that's us as planets. It'll oh, be yeah. cute. You make a nice... I could see People you laugh at it. I could also see you yeah, as, like exactly. a, as a star. That's, well, man, hopefully you be on the show is one step <laughs> in that direction, my friend. Okay, joke number four, six. I tried to open a restaurant on Neptune general but it didn't succeed okay the atmosphere was all wrong man i gotta try harder not to laugh you're the best man all right joke number seven you're the best oh, yeah. thank you my friend moved off planet man you know what i got him as a housewarming gift <laughs> uh a space heater i got him a space heater <laughs> <laughs> That was the best one. That was definitely the least terrible one. That was really good. How many times did I laugh? 14? I think I laughed. I don't know, but I'll have a little meter at the bottom measuring it, and I'll put the score up. Okay, so we have the song coming in a second, but first let me ask you a couple questions about your hit motion picture and your band, okay? Please. Is it hard to play music wearing that red helmet? Yes, it's very hard. It's very hot, and you can't hear much. Pretty much the worst thing you could wear if you're playing music. It looks like it's evolved over the years and it looks a little bit less terrible now than it did at the beginning. Well, it looks less terrible, but interestingly, well, I guess, I, actually, I think you can hear better in the, in the new ones. They're just, uh, they're just, by, when, I, when I say new, I mean the ones that are 10 years old from the movie. <laughs> right, they have vents of, on the ears. When you, when you do as much light speed travel as I do, you, you realize that yeah. time is relative and, and uh, you, you don't worry about things like that. But it was a I long know. time ago, to some, depending on how fast you're traveling. Uh, but yes, it was, uh, they were easy to hear, but very, uh, very uncomfortable to do for long shows. I mean, it was fun to wear them, but, uh, you know, it was, we had a, a, a PA whose job it was to uh, put a little fan on our forehead just to keep the sweating down when, the, when we were in between takes on set. Nice. And um, do people cosplay as you guys? Yes. That's one of the funnest things about, I mean, there's a lot of amazing things about Future Folk. But one of my favorite, and, and a lot of them have to do with people expressing their creativity in amazing ways. But uh, the, just seeing all the folks who are like yourself, like uh, you, you got it together and you got the, the, the helmet on. And yeah, well, there's a bucket head types, but do you get like the full on, like people do the full uniform and they have, you, yeah. you know, because I know they get hardcore at the conventions. People get, uh, people get very creative. We've seen full outfits. We've seen things that are way better way better <laughs> than our original <laughs> you know our original suits were, right. were, were pretty um were pretty bargain basement it was like sweats and and a bucket and some some stuff from radio shack when radio shack was oh uh, really sweats i saw the red one piece but i didn't yeah. see the sweats yeah yeah and then right then we upgraded to like a car heart red one 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 piece right um but uh yeah, see, so seeing seeing so many people and being able to, uh, you, you know, we, we went on tour and going and pulling into cities that we neither of us had ever been to before and seeing people lined up dressed like that and just so creative. I love it. Do you have people who come up to you and think you're really from space? Not, or Earthlings? Are you talking about Earthlings or, or, or anything? I'm talking about, or not talking about Hondonians, I'm talking about Earthlings. Just Earthlings? Uh, yeah, yes. occasionally, occasionally. There's a few few people who um, who understand that that kind of stuff and and uh, yeah normally it's not the kind of thing you talk about in public but and they're tuned in they're tuned into it they're tuned into it and I think that once you know if you recognize someone else who knows those kinds of things then the, there's a temptation to talk about it but you don't want to like you don't want somebody to overhear you're a dad 
do you ever tell your kids you're f from outer space to troll them? Uh, well, my uh, my oldest was who is now eleven was yep. um, one when we were shooting. Oh, and really? So okay. So she didn't see the movie for many many years, and my my youngest wasn't even born. She was actually born on the day of the film's first film festival premiere. Wow. Um, so it wasn't until years later that, that they, uh, that they saw it and they would, they did ask me and I, and I said, I thought I was being cute. Yeah. That I was out from outer space thinking that they would understand. They asked, are you really from space dad? Yeah. Um, and you said, yeah, of course, honey. Of course I said that. Cause it's kind of, kind of true. Um, yeah, but they definitely believed it for, for a while. And, uh, um, you know, someday I'd love to take them there. I tell my son, Baby Ball, mm. that I'm a vampire at night, right before bed. Yeah. And every night I give him a chance to become a mortal. And he gets mad at me, but yeah. I simply say, you're not ready yet. You're not old enough yet, you know? Yeah. You know, speaking of Baby Ball, I saw, I had this thing happen the other day where I saw there was like a small ball and it kept getting bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. And then it hit me. <laughs> That's a classic. Yeah. Um, your new song, which we're going to hear in a moment, mm -hmm. is a stylistic departure, right? Is, you, is your new next album going to have a different musical style or well, vibe? Uh, you know, the next Future Folk album with uh, Mighty Kevin and myself will, yes. will, be, will be OG Future Folk. Is that a Van Halen record on the shelf behind you? Oh, I would love to show you what that is. Wait, 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 hold on. It's too late. This is how this, is how this podcast is going. My friend illustrates album covers. And this is the Van Halen oh. 1984 thing that he did with, with markers. What's your friend's name? His name is Aaron Novick. His name is Aaron Novick. He's a very uh, uh, talented guy. Okay. That's cool. Well, we'll put a link to his stuff on, in the description. Great. Um, so in terms of your band, do you guys need a third ball? Like a Pete Best? <laughs> you know, there's been a lot, been a lot of... T there's been a yeah, well, there's been a lot of talk about you, and and should we or shouldn't we? You know, you have you already have the helmet, but I think that we've come this far, and we're just gonna kind of stick to it a as it is, and and if um, it's all right, man, I'll just keep hanging out at every single show until you decide that you go change your mind. It's fine. Yeah, no, that, that's great. Um, are you guys currently writing songs for your next album? Because I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yes. I mean, we're, I'm, we're, we're always writing future folk songs. Okay. Kind of, at, at this point, it's, it's, um... It's constant. It's constant. It's like farming worms. You're farming future folk songs. It's just what you know. I heard rumors about a future possible vinyl release. Is there any truth to that? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what if you want to see a future folk vinyl um, release... Yeah. Put you put it in the comments below right. and say I will buy it, and they'll make I him do that it. that slip that I was thinking about doing a Kickstarter for a uh, a vinyl release for for Future Folk Volume One with um, a few additional tracks, uh, some of the singles that we that we've released. Right. But uh, I'm still I'm still putting it together. It seems like shiny red vinyl, shiny red vinyl. I want to do it because I would love to have that. But uh, if I other know. people, if enough other people would like it too, then, then uh, I think we're going to do it. All right, let's talk about the movie for a second. Yeah. Mighty Kevin is a space alien, and he feels things very deeply, but he's never heard music before. All right, now I have to ask you, mm. how hard was that banjo breakdown to nail? Was that really hard? Great question. Question of banjo, banjo people would, uh, would appreciate it was uh, the hardest thing about about arranging it was probably finding enough uh, royalty free songs and just trying to figure out wh wh what songs were royalty free and trying to find right. enough that spanned across time. Um, and uh, you know, once I had arranged it, I you know practiced it a lot. On the day of filming, we had been back to back for you know four or five days. And I think I hadn't been feeling well or something, and I just wow. didn't like. I didn't have time to warm up, and it was we were behind schedule, and it was like I think two takes, Ugh. and I think that was the first first take we did. And I remember afterwards thinking that I that that I hadn't 
I felt feeling like a bum that I was like, I didn't, that wasn't as good as it could have been. You did a good job. I, I mean, I've seen it so many times in the movie now that I don't even, I don't even remember what it was. What that was of course, they edit back and forth, so it's sort of like they could have used yeah. a little bit of the well, second oh, take. You know, that was, yeah, that was the other thing. I, I, you know, I had to practice this thing, and then on the day, they're like, "Here's the blocking. We're gonna have you pacing back and forth, but you need to do it in a way that we can cut together different takes." So you need to like remember where you are in the song as you pace, right? Which, as, you know, which was a lot, a lot to layer on with the uh, with playing the, the music. Like, you have to yeah. remember that you're like at, you have to like do your pacing in time with the music. Yeah, that's well, that's crazy. I thought it was interesting that you chose to license the Mario Brothers song. Yeah, that was the one, uh, the one one that. Uh, that I we felt strongly sh should be in there and it was was worth w worth it in the end because it was a it good like, choice. Pops out, yeah, it totally does. My kids gasped when it. <laughs> That's good. Does, do you know? Did you um, recognize the other Nintendo reference in the in the movie? Um, did you do a Legend of Zelda song? No, there's a there's a uh, a shot in the training montage where I'm riding a bike and Mighty Kevin is in a pink sweatshirt jogging right. behind. That is the cutscene uh, from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. And it's filmed in the same place with the Manhattan skyline in the background. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's, it's deep nerd. It's a beautiful thing. Did you film that signature Home Depot se sequence while the store was open? No, we filmed that at like 5 in the morning. Before, before it opened and that was another like everything else on this movie it was very like we have like this amount of time and just go do it do it do it um, and a lot of that stuff that made it into the movie was improv like me playing the electric guitar yep. that was just something that like we did dancing to the dancing to the radio all those things were just sort of spontaneous on the day I mean we just filmed a lot of goofing around at the at the Home Depot after we had got our uh, our shot list out of the way and uh and, you know, I think that those are the moments. <clears throat> and there's other instances in the, in, in the movie, you know, the joke about the buckets. There's a lot of things that were um, just sort of the, 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 the stuff that was happening on set of the day. You had a very yeah. comfortable... Yeah, because a lot of that stuff was really situational, prop-based humor at Home Depot. So I figured you guys must have been doing some improv there and, and just putting it together. And it comes out great. It's a really fun scene to begin the movie with. Did you see any of your relatives in the sporting goods section? Uh, all right. Don't be a wise guy. <laughs> That's ballist, okay? <laughs> That's ballist. More people think don't think about ball Americans. Um, D. Snyder mm. plays the manager of Trash Bar, mm -hmm. which is the bar that's like the central bar in the film. What's he like? Uh, he's like exactly like you would expect him to be like. I would think of him as a gruff, big-hearted, really New York kind of guy, and he probably was really supportive of your film. Yes, all that's true. He was he was so open and um, and just like generous, and was having fun and enjoying himself. He's fantastic love, love in the movie. And and, and I do, there, there's a couple. I have a couple of funny D, sto D stories, but like. The one give the, them all to me now. No, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you the most <laughs> touching, touching one. Uh, oh. Was that there was like a p moment on set when all the extras were starting to come in. I think it was we were filming that last last scene when he's like locking the doors and and there's all the people in the helmets in there and he's like, "Let's rock this bitch, right?" And yeah. he like pulls me aside. And, and Jay, he's very close with, with Jay. He's, Jay is how we got him in, in, in the movie, because they did... Oh, Rock how do Ages. they know each other? They did Rock of Ages together on, on Broadway. Oh, cool. And uh, he pulls me... Man, that Jay is something else. He's a talented guy. I know, I know. I didn't tell him I was doing this, because I didn't want him to steal, steal the spotlight. Hi, Jay. Uh, oh, man. Jay, I want you to come on, too, would you? <laughs> yeah, he would be great. We'll talk all about your solo project. Yes, well, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so D pulls me over and he's like, "Look out!" And he's like, "Look at look at all these people wearing buckets." He's like, "You won! Like that's if you 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 made wow. this happen 
and that is like a beautiful thing and I, and I thought that was very cool he's right man and I'm sure he's thinking back and he's being like man you know when Twisted Sister was just the big on top of the world yeah I'm sure he had some moments like that where he was like man we've made it we won yeah we did yeah. it no it was nice and he was he was uh when he got Mark Metcalf to be in those videos. That's right. That was a, yeah, that was a big 80s, that's an 80s win right there. Did you talk to him about those videos at all? No, I, I didn't really go into, into the Twisted Sister thing. I was a fan when I was, when I was growing up. I mean, how could you not say to him, What is that? A Twisted Sister pin on your uniform? You're worthless and weak! <laughs> I know, I know, I do love that. That is such an iconic video. Uh, I think that maybe Jay and I once did a uh, um, We're Not Gonna Take It bluegrass version for him, and that was like by the look of his, on his face. It was pretty clear that we shouldn't. Oh, D. No, no. I, I, what, do I, you no, think no, he I, would I, be I, on the... I'm paraphrasing. Do you think he would, I'm paraphrasing. Would, would he be on Dennis Ball show? Uh, I don't know. It's not uh, well, maybe I can... I, well, yeah, I know. I just have to get Jay to vouch for me. All right. Here's the last question. Mm -hmm. Is Trash Bar a real bar that you guys played music at? Yes. Trash Bar was a real bar. It was called the Trash Bar. And we actually we'd never played a gig there uh, before the movie. And since it has, unfortunately, shuttered its doors, it's closed. I believe it's <gasps> now a Pilates studio. No! Which is funny because, <laughs> probably shouldn't say this, but when we were... Um, say it! We, so we would come in and we would roll in at like f you know, five or six in the morning to start shooting. But they would, of course, be still cleaning up from the night before. Um, yep. And it was just like... De a debauchery there was like cocaine all over the table and it was just like it was clearly a real trash bar they were like up oh, the, the the movie's starting in five minutes so let's just start like pulling, <laughs> pulling stuff together um, before they fl they flipped it uh, so yeah so it was a, it was a real uh, New York classic Williamsburg rock and roll hipster uh, gnarly beautiful one of a kind place doesn't exist anymore it's now plot studio <sighs> on that note <sighs> pun intended let's hear the amazing new hondonian song from future folk there's like a lot of conversations happening in music today about like why aren't there more songs about the water cycle but there's not a lot of people doing things about that there's not a lot of people who are looking for solutions for that problem, to that problem. And yeah. so I thought that this was a unique opportunity um, to sing about the water cycle on Hondo. And it's a little different than it, than it, um, a little different than it, than it is here on earth. And uh, there's water on Hondo. Uh, there, there's water on Hondo. Of course, water is, is, is uh, foundational for, for life. Uh, are there dad jokes on Hondo? Uh, yeah, dad jokes all over the universe. Oh, good. The song is called H2O Volcano. The dark distant planet on which I was born Was widely revered for its type of rainstorm The clouds, they did nothing but pass right on by No rain dropped to drop Cause the rain clouds were dry Not a shower, nor sprinkle, nor snowflake of snow Instead just the dread of the volcanoes They blasted their fodder with a deafening cry In boiling hot water would pour from the sky Hey.
Future folk, thank you so much for joining us from Hondo. It was my pleasure. I had a lot of fun, and uh, I think you're a wonderful ball. And um, everybody, buy their record when the Kickstarter goes up, and click subscribe on my thing. Right? That's how, that's how you're gonna smash it. Just be like, smash that 